EV Revolution show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. All right, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host. If you're following me, you already know my name. Thanks very much for tuning in, I appreciate it. Hey, I'm down here at the 2022 Detroit uh, Auto Show or the North American International Auto Show, whichever you want to go by for Media Day here. So uh, I've got early access to come and walk the floor and see what's going on and probably most of the stuff I've already seen, but I'm excited to see it. And my co-pilot for today, actually my driver, is Mark. And Mark, what's the channel again? Three. What drives us? What drives us? What drives us? So Mark has a YouTube channel. Please go check it out. He's a great guy. He lives local, so we carpool down here in our zero emission Model 3. That's right. Perfect. So, uh, so sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and I'll give you some coverage on what's going on here. Well, first thing we see when you come into the show here is the Cadillac Lyric. As you guys know, looking at my full review that I did from the Utah Media Drive event back in late June, it's a fantastic vehicle. Now, I know Cadillac's already sold out of 2022 models, and I'm hearing that they may be sold out of 2023 models already for pre-reservations. But if not, and you're interested, check out the website and see what they got. As, as far as a pricing and a package for this vehicle, it's really, really good. You know, about 60K US before incentives and about under 70K, about 68 and change Canadian. Pretty well loaded, there's not much options to add to this. You know, only one color, I believe a, a black's coming as well. Excellent vehicle, check it out. And again, thanks to Cadillac for pushing this out. Let's just see some more numbers. All right, so just stop by the Buick booth with, of course, the Wildcat concept car, all electric. Uh, this is not a production vehicle. This is really design language and engineering and all that kind of stuff to be used for future Buick vehicles in the electrification space. Now, we have the President of the United States apparently is coming to this building, so they're clearing us out so he can get a private tour. But I just wanted to quickly film this. It's a stunning vehicle in person, folks. I love the design and the language, and I look forward to seeing some of this hit production in future Buick vehicles sometime soon. Here at the GMC booth, of course, what's behind me? The big bad Hummer EV. It is a big beast when you see it in person, I'll tell you. Uh, 1,100 horsepower or, or 1,000, something like that. Now, they've already sold out of the first editions of the, the pickup truck version of the Hummer EV, uh, and they're continuing to ramp up for orders into 2023 and 2024. Uh, but if we walk over here, and we're gonna walk past these fine people here, if you don't mind, excuse me, I'm just gonna, if my friend in the camera can get a shot of this, do you mind, sir? Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Watch your step there. You know, I only do things live, that's the way I roll, guys. So, of course, the SUV version of the Hummer will start shipping in the early part of the spring next year. And I believe they're taking reservations for this beast as well. I think the horsepower torque is a little less than this, is that right? The horsepower is eight, well, I can't. It's okay. No. <laughs> eight something right the horsepower is eight something and torque so it's up there and it's going to move folks you know and the range numbers are all on the website so check out the gmc website in your region for that but you know beautiful looking vehicles and even though they're big and they're not cheap they're selling so check them out and good on gmc now here's the platform from a hummer as you can see it so it's still based on that altium platform but this thing is a beast because they've actually doubled the size of the, uh, the battery pack. So they've, they've doubled the height of it to cram all those cells in, I think somewhere in the area of 200 kilowatt hours, if I'm not mistaken, to get the range and the performance of, this, uh, of the Hummer platform on it. But otherwise, it's still an Altium-based platform, very rugged, very rigid, very safe, all that stuff. I mean, you know, the Hummer was a pretty big car to kind of kick around. So this one's going to be even harder. But just fascinating to see the technology unwrapped here at the GMC booth. Continuing on with Chevrolet, here at the brand new, recently unveiled Equinox EV. L listen folks, you guys know I'm really stoked about this one. I did a full episode reveal episode about a week or so ago, mentioning about the price point, making that, you know, that's giving you some data to think about, about where GM is going on the electrification path, why this is such a tremendous value, and to me this is a game changer in the electrification marketplace for the mass consumers. 
And seeing it in person, yes, this is pre-production, so it's going to be, you know, what it is. But it looks gorgeous. I mean, we can't climb in and do anything, but just looking at it, it's a good size, not too big, not too small, enough to carry four kids, a dog, and some, you know, soccer gear, that kind of stuff. Hey, up to uh, 300 mile ranges on these, which is about 480 kilometers, at that really good price point. So we're going to get an interview with somebody soon. We're just in line for that, but uh, I'm really excited about the Equinox. All right, back here at the Equinox, I'm here with Steve Majores, Director of Marketing for Chevrolet. How are you, sir? Awesome. It's Did I butcher day. the name? I got it? No, it's all good. It's a great Chevrolet day. It is a great Chevrolet day. So I, I did a reveal episode when this was revealed last week, you know, mm -hmm. as part of the Canadian media, I got all the stuff. Uh, and I labeled it truly a mass market EV because I truly believe that this is a, a perfect step that GM is taking a Chevrolet in the right direction. What are your thoughts on that? Well, am, I, am I bonkers or what? No, no you're not. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people ask the question, is this finally the vehicle that mainstreams EVs? Yeah. And, and we like to say, I'm not sure that's a question anymore as much as it is now a statement. Because when you think about just this particular segment, Compact SUV, over 20% of the retail industry, right? So it's got to do a lot of things really well. That's yep. exactly what this product does. You add on top of that the starting at price of around $30,000. Mm -hmm. Give people the range they're looking for, the technology. We think we had a winner on our hands, and, and really it's time that people look at EVs and say, you know, they're, they're just in people's consciousness more right now, yes. right? You see more charging stations. Your friend or neighbor has one. Yep. And so when you can bring a mass market vehicle named Equinox that people are familiar with, sold by a brand they trust with EV experience, it feels pretty good. And my understanding is this is the number two vehicle next to the Silverado as far as the, uh, the truck or SUV sales, correct? Absolutely. In the it's ice fleet. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's our number two selling product. So Absolutely. we know how to sell Equinox in volume, just like we do Silverado and Blazer. Mm -hmm. You know, these three products are in the industry's fastest growing and yeah. largest segments. And that's really what Chevrolet is known for. Yeah. And really, it's what customers are looking for. The customer has spoken. They want SUVs, they want crossovers, they want pickups, and that's what Chevrolet best delivers. So how can you get the price point down to that, that magical 30 or around 34, a very competent vehicle? You know, we're looking at 240 miles, I think, on the on the 1LT trim or something like Two, that. 250. 250 on the 1LT up to 300. How can you do that? What's the secret? Well, a big part of it is, is what the, the benefits of the LTM platform. And so, I mean, you know the silver bullet here, right? Yep. Cost per kilowatt hour, scale, manufacturing capacity, supply chain certainty, all, all these elements work together, but that's really what Chevrolet has done. I mean, the kind of investments that we've made, um, the kind of things that Ultium enables us to do, and there's a lot of sharing, right? Yeah. Things that customers don't see. The two battery packs on this product are the same two battery packs, or two of the eligible battery packs on the Blazer EV. Yeah. So think about cost sharing, think about savings, yeah. the same screen. Economies in, of scale, things this, like that. Yeah. The same screen that's in there mm -hmm. is the same screen that's yeah. in that one over there. It's yeah. the same screen that's in the Silverado. Yeah. And so it's dynamic, it's big, but you know, this sense of overdeveloping, let's make sure we got the right products, but where we can give the customer great value and, and make sure that we can do it economically. Yeah. And but that's what Chevrolet has always been about. So we have to bring products like this to market. So between Chevrolet, GMC, and Cadillac, I count eight fully electrified vehicles here today on the floor, you know, including the bolts with the three here. You've got two Hummers, you got the Cadillac all on the GM nameplate. Eight vehicles, the goal is 30, I understand, in the next few years. You guys are well on your way to getting there. Well, we certainly are. We've made a lot of commitments about the number of EVs, about production, uh, et cetera. Look, Chevrolet is, we like to say that General Motors is kind of unleashing Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are General Motors' volume brand. We're here for share. We're here for scale. We're here to make sure we can meet any customer's need, whether it's internal combustion engine or EV variants. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. We are a big part of General Motors' plans moving forward. But we're in it in the places that matter to customers. And so yeah. when you look at things, again, like Equinox, Blazer, Silverado, and we've even made news and talked about things like our electrified Corvette. Uh, there's a lot in the portfolio, but the story today certainly is the phenomenal success of the Bolt EV and EUV. We yes. had a record month last month. Excellent. And then Good these, to hear. these great new products. And last question. Uh, I haven't seen the order books, the reservations, open yet for the Equinox. Any idea when that may occur and when, when uh, FCS for these products are going to start? Um, so we actually have not uh, done a reservation program for Equinox. So it was okay. a bit of a change for us. Yeah. Frankly, we learned a lot. Right? Okay. There's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of commentary about the number of reservations, what have you. But if you think about what the customer's looking for, what, we're gonna what we've are going to chosen to do is have a lot of hand raisers, people we can engage okay. with. And as we get closer, because for every all the goodness of reservations, you get a lot of frustration, sure. right? And with, yeah. the, with the uncertainty of chips and what and when, yeah. we, we'd rather say when we've got 
fidelity on what trim and when and where, then we're going to meet those needs and we'll be engaged with our customers accordingly. And FCS, I understand, is targeted for a second half of next year on the two RS uh, model, um, is that what, correct? Sorry, I, I'm not First customer the, ships. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay. late next year, I understand, yeah. Yeah, so, so yep. the Equinox starts, uh, you know, call it fall of 2023. Yep. Uh, we will have one model, but yep. in the first model year, we'll have the full lineup available. Great. Actually, Blazer starts uh, production, call it July of That's next right. year. Silverado, the fleet variant, yep. starts in March or April or so mm -hmm. with the retail version in the fall of next year. So all three of these vehicles in production and on sale next year. A lot of EVs sit in the street, and I understand that the, all three are being built in Mexico, is that correct, including Equinox? Uh, I'm Equinox not sure. and Blazer are Mexico, yep. and Silverado is uh, here outside of Detroit. That's so right, Factory Zero and Tramit, and, right? And yep. Orion we've also announced for truck production as well. And of course, continuing with the Altium battery, that's your, you know, the bread and butter for all this, Well, right? the Altium is, is, yep. the, is, the, is the Altium enabler yep. here, right? <laughs> exactly. And so, again, a purpose-built platform, yep. decided to make the investment to make sure that it's not just the batteries and the packs, it's the drive units, it's the reuse and it's the expandability, modularity. You can stack cells this way, mm -hmm. you can stack them this way. You can have a single stack, you can have a double stack. So the investment that's been made to enable products like a Hummer to an Equinox and all points in between, uh, we like our chances. Excellent. Well, it's all great news from GM. Wish you guys the best of success. Thank you very right. much for Thank your time. You. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right, still at the uh, GM Chevrolet booth. It's the one with the most EVs, folks, I'm telling you. So here behind me is obviously the, the bell of the ball, the Silverado EV. This is the top spec version, the RST, which will be the first one that they're shipping for 2023. Beautiful pickup truck. Again, it's a game changer when it comes to the pickup truck world. You're going to say, hey, what about Cybertruck? What about Ford 150? Well, Cybertruck isn't here, and it's not coming for a while. The 150 is shipping, but remember, the 150 has batteries and electronics that's packed into an existing uh, apparatus and layout. This is based on the Altium platform, so this is all new, right? This is an economy of scale platform that GM's revving up production on, and this will have longer range and more features than even the F-150 extended. So I'm not to say F-150 is a bad truck, it's awesome and it's doing well, but I tell you, this truck is going to give a serious run for the top all-electrified pickup truck spot in North America when they start kicking these off the production line, especially for the lower spec levels. You'll be able to get a lot of truck at a cheaper price, not the 100000 or so price point. So once we get through those issues, probably in 2024, you'll start seeing a lot more of the lower spec versions. Fantastic truck. Check it out. If you have pre-ordered one, send me an email. I'd love to know what you're hearing from GM and from Chevrolet on these. Oh, it's all good. All right, so here I'm front of, uh, still at the Chevrolet uh, booth with the Blazer EV, of course. I'm not going to go into a lot of it because I did a full episode reveal when I was down in LA. In fact, I'm pretty sure that this is the same car that I sat and climbed in in Los Angeles, the Premier. There can't be that many pre-productions floating around. So beautiful car again in person. Really, really nice. You saw, Check out my video for all the details and information on this. But again, you know, I'm staying at one manufacturer's booth and I'm just coming across EV after EV after EV. It's got to be something there, folks. You know, think about that. All right, and we can't forget, since we're still at the GM uh, booth, the Bolts, right? Their original all-electric vehicle. They did very well with the Volt as a V. Obviously, I think they cut it a little bit too soon, but, you know, decisions are decisions. They need the money to fund this stuff. So this still has the Gen 2 stuff in it, but they're still very valid, good range, decent, uh, you know, great for home charging, okay, fast charging, right? You know, pulling around 65, 70. So you'd be the gauge of that. Take a little longer on the road trips, maybe 45 minutes to an hour 15, depending on the charger, but doable, right? You know that. But as all purpose, a roundabout commute, commute or inner city, these are fantastic vehicles at a really good price. So yes, the Equinox is gonna be priced very similar to this, especially when you look at incentives like in Canada or the US with the IRA. Of course, eventually they will qualify for those. So these are gonna be con still compelling vehicles. Don't know how long GM's gonna keep them going, they haven't said anything, so we assume at least another couple of years probably until they can find something to fill it. But the Bolt EV and the Bolt EUV are fantastic vehicles. I've done reviews of each, so check them out if you want more information. But again, we have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven vehicles here at the GM booth. Seven folks doing good. <laughs> so all these vehicles we're seeing from GM, Chevrolet, of course the Hummers, all the different divisions, right? GMs, you watch my episodes, you know they have the Ultium Charge 360 program, and it's really their way of combining some of their own chargers that they'll deploy at dealers, of course, but mainly third-party charger networks that are out there. Their first one on board is EVGO here in the US as an example. 
but they'll go after EA, they'll go after Chargepoint, they'll go after all the major North American providers eventually and get them into one umbrella. And what that umbrella is going to look like is that you can go up to any of those partner charging networks and just plug in. All the payment transactions going to be done in the background. Right, GM's going to be the handler for that payment information and they will distribute the funds to the proper charging provider. That's my understanding how it's going to work. Once you set up your, your account with GM, and I think that's done through OnStar or, or the My Chevrolet app features, uh, you'll be able to do that. So it'll be a, a, you know, a Tesla-like experience where you just plug in, go do your thing and come back, right? Use your app to monitor the state of charge. So that's what the Altium uh, Charge 360, and of course they have home-based charging, so I think in some areas GM is, is either giving some credits towards a home charger, uh, or throwing in some, or giving some credits towards the insulation of one. Your, your range is going to vary depending on what region you're in, but you can check out details there. And it's really to help provide access to charging with their mobile app, and adding the pro products and services that you want as a consumer. So I sound like a commercial for them, but I'm not. I'm just reading what they have here, folks. They are really going after the consumer market, and that's what I'm trying to get across to everybody, right? You know, based on Altium, right? Here's a platform that can scale. I can use it for, what do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven models here on the floor from GM, right? Seven fully electrified models, all using this platform, just different configurations of it. So scale, ease of use, and to be able to crank those units out the way we need it. So check them out if you haven't uh, heard anything about GM look at all this stuff and make your decision. All right, so you've heard me talk a lot about GM. Let's change boost to Ford right across the street here from GM. Of course, the Mach-E doing fairly well for Ford, right? They've got some issues, some recalls, things like that, but it's okay. They're muddling through, you know, it's a fantastic vehicle. I've done a review on this one, so check it out. Good to see the Mach-E and of course the F-150 is here. Just got a quick ride in it, so here's that video with that ride. It's just a short kind of 30 second loop where the guy guns it, but it's fun, you'll get a kick out of it. Definitely, you know, holding in the tradition of the number one selling uh, uh, pickup truck in North America with the F-150, it's a great truck. Like I said earlier, I think GM with the Silverado is gonna challenge that, but we gotta wait till numbers get up there in production for that. But certainly Ford is doing well with these products. Let's just hope they start building some more and get them out there. The F-150. Welcome to Lightning. Thank you. This is the uh, F-150 Lightning. It's the Platinum, if you notice. So it's got yep. all the nice fit and finish that we get out of the out of the mm -hmm. Premium Series. It's a dual motor truck. It's got yep. one in the front, one in the rear. It makes about 550 horsepower and about 750 foot-pounds of torque. Nice. Uh, as being an older guy, you know, I set points when I was a kid, so I've, I've, I've experienced it at both ends. This, the great thing about these mm -hmm. is it's all torque. Did you eat your lunch yet? Yes. We try to get you on this before you have a corn dog. Did it come back? Yeah. Uh, love it's, it, love it's, it. It's 3.8 seconds, 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Amazing. For how much it weighs, 8,000 pounds? Yeah, right like around that? there. Yeah. Uh, you get about 250 miles out of the standard range battery mm -hmm. and about 320 miles out of the extended range battery. Beautiful. Absolutely. All right, so I'm here in the Toyota booth. I'm here with Andy. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Ken. Excellent. So, you know, obviously Toyota has been doing, uh, I mean, you've got a history in electrification, right? You go, guys go way back with the RAV4, which mm -hmm. maybe a lot of folks don't remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also with the Prius, mm -hmm. you know, we brought that electrification to the U.S. early 2000s. So we were a pioneer even then for electrification. And now, of course, we're moving into the BEVs. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited to have some great things coming your way. We have the BZ4X, of course. Yep. And we'll have seven under that BZ, which stands for Beyond Zero moniker, right. uh -huh. in the next few years. I'm glad you said it, because I was trying to remember what it was. So, yeah. <laughs> so seven mod uh, models this decade, I would say, is yeah. probably a safe bet. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've got the full electric now, which is, which is here and starting deliveries. We're standing in front of the Mirai, which is, again, another pathway that you guys are on in the fuel cell. Tell me a little yes. bit about that. So we have hydrogen fuel cell technology, and we've been invested in that since even when we were really looking at hybrids. Right. So we've been invested in that for a very long time, zero emissions. So we have that commitment. Mm -hmm. And then of course you had mentioned we have fully electric vehicles now. We have the hybrid, of course. Mm -hmm. And we do have plug-in hybrids too yes. that give people the opportunity who aren't ready to go fully electric. Mm -hmm. They're able to plug in their vehicle. But if they never plug it in, 
it's a hybrid, so and it gets excellent fuel economy. And those are the prime versions of the vehicles, right? Yes. So when they see the, the prime moniker, yep, then that Prius means that prime, they're a plug-in versus prime. just a hybrid version. Right? Exactly. I shouldn't say just a hybrid, but um, so obviously Toyota still believes in the hybrid approach, right? Fuel economy, you know, uh, greater fuel economies. I mean, obviously California helps push that regulations here in the U.S. and and really throughout the world, they're one of the leaders in that. So adhering to those standards and, and the higher fuel economies, that's important. But do do you, do you see Toyota at some point, you know, starting to think more about electrification and maybe weaning off of hybrids, not plug-ins, but hybrids? What do you think about that? I don't like no to speculate. Yeah, I don't I like to speculate because there is a lot of brilliant minds that go yes. into it, and I am so thrilled with what we've been able to do so far to give mm -hmm. people, of course, the hybrids very early on, yeah. and people love the hybrids, yes. and that technology has really taken off. And then now, as we're getting into fully electric vehicles and we're hoping that the fuel cell is adopted more throughout the country, right. uh, we, we're really committed to all of those things. Okay. So I don't want to speculate nope. on, on what the future Not looks like, but kind of curious, yeah. we're always innovating and we're always exploring. Absolutely. And that fuel cell that you mentioned, Andy, um, is Toyota, uh, what's, what steps are, is Toyota doing to help spur the adoption of fuel cell? Because one of the issues that I find is just availability from a consumer refueling standpoint. Refueling standpoint. You know, I'm based outside Toronto, so there's one station in downtown Toronto, I'd have to drive about 35 miles to get to it kind of thing, to chart. So what's, what's Toyota working on to maybe help spur that adoption in the infrastructure game? Yeah, so we do have an app, of yep. course, that allows people to plan their mm -hmm. drives. Mm -hmm. Currently, that's something that we want to support our consumers in doing, being yep. able to plan their ride. That's ease of ownership. We also give fuel for free. Okay. And oh, an we want, yes, we like to give the hydrogen for free. That's okay. an incentive because we want people to uh, just know be, without knowing what the prices may be sure. of the hydrogen. So okay. that's another way that we're trying to spur it on. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, those are a couple of the ways. Okay. So obviously that will continue to get deployed hydrogen refilling stations, you know, based on demand, based on area. Based on, yeah. Obviously West Coast, some of the states, right, the, the ZEV states, uh, BC, right, the Vancouver area has got a few, so it seems to be adopted. But I guess over time we'll start seeing some more adoption in some of the higher density areas for this. Because I can tell you, I test drove this on a racetrack last year uh, for AJAC on the, the test fest, and it's a really capable vehicle. It's yeah. not a race car, but it's very capable. It's fun, solid, and it really goes. Like it's, a, it, it, it was kind of blown away by that. Yeah. Yep. So, so interesting. Okay. Any last comments about you know the electrification strategy? I know you've got some electrified vehicles. You've got lots of lineup. Anything else you want to add to that as the alarms go off here? Yes. <laughs> This is one of the main things I like to tell people who haven't had experience in electrification yet. They are more fun to drive because you don't have the torque leg. So I think a lot of people don't realize just how fun it can be to drive an electric or a plug-in or a hybrid vehicle. We call it iForce Max in our Tundra and our Sequoia. We call okay. it our iForce Max, and that's our powertrain. Yes, okay. So it has a 3.5 liter V6 twin yep. turbo, but that's paired with the hybrid. Okay. And it gives you the most. That's you why we call it the Max. Boost, yeah, right? so you yeah. so you get the most. You get uh -huh. um, the best fuel economy, but you're also, it's the fastest. Mm -hmm. And it's the most fun to drive and the most capable. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing more from Toyota and continuing to follow it. I thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure talking to you. Nice talking thank to you, you too, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm here at the Subaru booth, and I'm here with Carrie. How are Hi, you, Carrie? Well, thanks. So Pleasure much to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you for you. taking the time to talk to me about this lovely machine, the Subaru Silterra. Uh -oh. What can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, this is our uh, all-electric vehicle, yep. our first, our first endeavor. It's all-wheel drive. It's all-wheel drive, dual motor. And, uh, yeah, dual yeah. motor. Exactly. Yeah. 215 miles range okay. right now. Yep. Um, is there anticipation to have an increased capacity later on at, at some point? point? I'm not sure. Not I'm sure? Not, yep, okay. Not, not sure. But 250, 250 or 215? 215. 215. Yep. Um, you know, I, I saw one of these up in, I'm from Canada, so okay. I saw one of the prototypes up in Sudbury a few months ago. It looked great. I couldn't get in it, so uh, I'll climb in and get some B-roll. But how's the feedback so far been from your client base on this product? Absolutely wonderful. It's, yeah. it's a Subaru through and through. You know, mm -hmm. it's got a great feel to it. It's a very comfortable ride. It's very, if you look at the interior, it's very user friendly. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. So you guys are really satisfied with your first four-way foray into the electric. I can't speak. It's been all good. <laughs> into the all electrified marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. And um, seeing some good uptake. I, I'm trying to remember. Are you guys open for reservations already and that I kind think, of stuff? I think on, online you can definitely put your your name on a list. So there's a waiting list reservations. Yep. And my understanding is that you hope to have first customer ship dates by the late part of this year or definitely into 2023. Is that correct? That's what I'm understanding. Yes. And is that starting in certain states first, like Zev states, or do you have any, any idea how that rollout might happen? 
that I'm aware of, honestly. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I know they're coming to Canada because, like I said, I've seen some there, right. so that's good. Um, in, and in what you know about the, the organization, you know, this is Subaru's again first first entry into the all electric marketplace. Where does the company want to go with that? Any idea? Well, from what I understand, I mean, this is definitely something that all the all the manufacturers are 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 leaping into, and this is being our first. Um, I don't think it'll be our last. Excellent. Definitely. So definitely, you know, this decade strategy about looking at more electrification in some form or fashion. I would um, have probably based on, on how this thing goes as well, Correct. right? And they go from there. Correct. But certainly a solid build, very lovely vehicle. I kind of like this better than the Toyota one, to be honest with you. But you know, <laughs> because Carrie's standing next to me, I'm going to say that. Any final thoughts you want to leave with viewers about Subaru and the EV landscape? Um, no, did I ask all the right questions? <laughs> I've stumped so the panel funny. here. You definitely. That's why I do these one take, guys. You guys know this. I do this. Well, listen, I appreciate your oh time. You're wonderful, Carrie. Oh, well, thank I know it's you. first day, and I'm already making her life miserable. I tell you, I appreciate it. Thank you thank very you much. So You've much. been great. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Is that all right? All right. Stop by the Stellantis booth here at the Detroit Auto Show, and of course. Uh, Jeep is where a lot of electrification is happening so far. Of course, the Chrysler branded Pacifica is over there. We've got the uh, Wrangler 4XE. So anything with the 4XE model or line means that it's a plug-in hybrid. It's got some battery pack to take you some distance in uh, all electric mode. It could be 25, 30, 35 miles, somewhere in that range. Uh, so, you know, 40 to 50 kilometer kind of thing. Um, you'll see I did a review on the, the Wrangler 4XE. So check that out if you want more details. Here we have, of course, the all new Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, that's coming a 4XE version. I'll get it, be getting my hands on one of these in about a month or so, a month and a half, so we'll, which will be great, because I love to test these when the weather is actually a little cooler and uh, see how, how the all electric range performs. Now, Stellantis, of course, is, has a roadmap on, based on their SDLA platform, small, medium, large, whole slew of vehicles. They've announced, of course, the, the Chrysler Air, if I remember correctly, or a concept. Um, vehicle that will probably look very similar to what it is. We don't know where that's going to be built and when, but over the next couple of years. Uh, and then we'll see more from them here in North America. Of course, as a brand, they're doing a lot of stuff in Europe with some of the sub-brands that Stellantis has, again, a big mega company. So maybe it's slightly slower out of the gate, but they too have a skateboard platform. They too are working on that economies of scale, just like General Motors and others are. So I do expect good things from Stellantis. I think they've mentioned that by 2030, they want to have 40% or more of their product line being a plug-in at some point, 40 to 60, I think is the number. So that's a good movement. They've got a large uh, worldwide uh, vehicle uh, realm uh, brands to think about. So we'll see more from them, but it's nice to see some electrification here in Detroit. So I wanted to stop by, of course, a Dodge. We talked about the Jeeps here. The, those brand, well, here is the Dodge I've got to read that again. Dodge Charger Daytona SRT concept. This is their all electric concept, which I'll bet money on will be really close to what you'll see hit the roads when it comes out. 800 volt architecture, all kinds of speeds. Their Dodge is, is, is pushing this as e-muscle, which I think is a great marketing tagline and slogan for these vehicles. You know, anything to get their existing muscle car enthusiasts into electrification is a good thing. Doesn't matter if it sounds corny or whatever. It's all a good thing because they're pushing the performance, they're pushing the power, the torque. We know all electrics provide these. And I think it's a great idea. Yeah, you can make engine noises, right? You can select different engine noises. It can sound like a truck if you want it to. It can be really loud. Car guys like that. I mean, I'm an old car guy myself. So, you know, tuning exhaust and things like that are part of it. So if they want to give the owners that experience, let them, as long as it gets them into electrification, into full elect full battery only, is what we're looking for as we try to get rid of tailpipes, or to educate minds, in this case, Dodge, one tailpipe at a time. So really super stoked about this. I'm hoping that we'll start seeing some variants of this or something make it into production within the next two to three years. I would say by 2025, if not sooner, we'll see something. But check this out, and I think you're gonna see us a lot more from the Dodge uh, brand, including the Ram, obviously, come in the next couple of years on their LA electric platforms. I think so. All right, so stumbled upon the Lordstown Endurance all-electric pickup truck. Now, these guys are still, they've been, you know, kind of a bit of a struggling startup for a few years getting going, but of course, with the infusion of cash from Foxconn and building a manufacturing facility in the old Lordstown GM plant, right, which GM sold uh, off to Lordstown. Now Foxconn's bought that. 
hopefully we'll start seeing these. Uh, this is here, I'm not sure why, maybe being considered as North American car, truck, and utility vehicle of the year. I'd question that a little bit because I don't think they've shipped any, but I'm not sure why it'd be considered. But hey, who am I to argue? But, you know, their claim to fame is they're building a work truck, right? They're going after the fleet market, the working class market for just a general purpose truck. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it'll be fully electrified. I believe they're also going with wheel hub-centric motors as well, same as we see in the Rivian as an example, to give it power for all-wheel drive. Uh, cab design, a shorter bed, but probably you know with a tailgate and everything that drops to give you some load capabilities. I'm sure power and vehicle uh, to grid uh, technology and that kind of stuff to power small work appliances and things like that, tools and things like that. So interesting, you can check out their website for more info. Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing, but yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting looking truck. It's a general purpose truck, something that you would see, you know, maybe just in a, in a base spec F-150 trim or Silverado work truck trim where you get that spec, but it seems to be nicely imported. Uh, appointed, I just hope that they can start building some production sometime soon, and I forget what their price points are, but I'm thinking they're somewhere around the 40 to 50K US for a decent truck, but we'll have to wait and see. Check out their website and get more info. Well, almost wrapped up watch, uh, walking the show, and what do we find here? Did you know that this is the first zero emission vehicle that was ever built? The Fred Flintstone Mobile, right? Zero emissions, there's no gas in it, no electricity. You know, the only emissions would be if you had too many beans the night before. That's the only emissions that you'll get out of it. But hey. What about the brakes, Ken? Well, the brakes are going to be very manual and uh, very only once only emergency use. And then you're toast. Exactly. Fun stuff, though. All right, Mark. Well, you and I are done the show. I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. Yep. We've been here. Way Jeez, too long. Uh, I don't know, seven hours? I'm, I can't even think now. Um, <laughs> hope everybody enjoyed the interviews and stuff. What's your takeaway on this show? What did you see? What it's you an like? impressive show. Yeah. It, it's large. It's uh, it's interesting. Uh, I'm impressed with what GM is putting out. I mm -hmm. um, have to say it. Number yeah. of vehicles finally starting to arrive. Yeah. Looking like uh, they're going to start producing them, start selling them. Uh, that's a plus. And the other thing is we're seeing all the other manufacturers starting to get involved. They may exactly. be coming in with their first entry, but you got to start somewhere. So it's good to see that electrification starting to spread across the entire industry. Yeah. The one thing we were talking about when we came in was every year we go to these car shows at Toronto or here or whatever ones we can get to, and we see more electrification, right? Before it's two cars in a corner somewhere. And now, you know, almost every booth has some story to share, whether it's hybrid, because they consider that electrification, yep. or plug-in, or full electric, right? It, you know, we're starting to see more of that. So as you said, GM's helping to push the yardsticks. I mean, Tesla isn't here because they don't need to be here, right? That's the, They do their own thing. Exactly, but, exactly. You know, it's, it's nice to see these guys. And, you know, folks, it costs money, a lot of money for these guys to come here and ship cars and bring cars and have people to talk about it. So. You know, some of the stories may be, uh, you know, not, a, we'd like to hear more, but it's good that they're here. It's good that they're talking to people about electrification. And, oh. and, and they were they were up front. Yeah. Everybody pushed their electrification up front true. of the booths, yeah. which is a change from a number of years ago right. when it was at the back no, and it wasn't true. talked about as much. That's true. Hard, you know, a few years ago, it's hard. You couldn't get an interview with anybody to talk about anything yeah. with a plug, right? They go, uh, sorry, nobody's here. So they didn't want to talk about it. Now we had no problems finding people and getting people to talk about it. So. Yeah. Very good point. So would you come back again for 2023 at some point? It, maybe? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I would see that. Yeah, yeah, I would come back if it doesn't conflict with anything. It's always nice uh, you know, to see this in Toronto. It, or, it's nice you know. that they moved us to a summer venue yes. over the, the winter. Correct. That's true. It, Detroit ain't no fun in January. It it's, ain't uh, no fun in Michigan <laughs> in January. Not, not much fun in Toronto then, too, but I hear you. September's okay. Unless you love snow. It's all good. Well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, being my pilot, bringing me down and helping me with stuff and, you know, talking to people because it's important for I your, appreciate from that, your perspective. Thanks very and, much. You know, thanks for you guys for watching the show. Appreciate that. If you're not subscribing on YouTube, please do. It mean a lot. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Sure. Uh, that's fine. You know, if you have Everything any feedback, I, I do answer every comment. For my Patreon uh, help, you guys know who you are. You can check out the link below, get information if you feel like helping me, even a cup of coffee a month, whatever you feel like is great. Continue to watch the EV landscape, and until the next time, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.